Hey, what's up, everybody? Finally got a pickups video for you guys. Anyways, uh, because I've been dealing with a lot of chronic pain and I just can't sit in one chair too long, it's all on my back, muscular type shit, plus my back goes out real easy. Anyways, uh, got plenty of new stuff to show you guys, but I'm going to do it in segments so I don't have just one big, long freaking video to suffer my way through. So this one... Mostly going to be showing you guys video game pickups and a couple of uh, Simon games. And uh, also, I have finally an official Goodwill store here in Kingman. Which is good news and bad news once you start shopping there. It's not just you guys in the big city that complain about Goodwill, man. Now I got a reason to. Let me put it this way. My last Goodwill was the hoarder store where you go through binfuls of mostly broken stuff and hopefully find something nice. I'm starting to miss that place. I found better stuff there than I'm finding here for more money. So, I'll be giving some examples. Anyways, this didn't come from Goodwill. This came from one of my local thrift stores. It's really close to me. Got it for a dollar. Figured. Something for my grandnephew if I don't like it. It's for the Nintendo DS. Anyways, got Goosebumps. Horrorland. Land with a lot of horrors. So maybe I will want to play it. I don't know. I'm a sick fucking bastard, so I might like it. I don't know. Alright, so a dollar for that. Next good deal. Got these at Pawn USA. And uh, I think it's Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Wii. I don't know about handheld game carts or anything or whatever for like the DS or whatever. But anyways, two for five. So not bad. Got two Wii games here. Got Rayman, Raving Rabbids. All complete. And let's see. This one. Pretty damn good shape. Yeah, this one is damn near perfect. There's maybe just a couple little light scratches. This one's missing the book, but I didn't care. And just really, really light scratches. Like somebody cleaned it with something they should have cleaned it with, but otherwise it's in good shape. Just missing the book. Pretty damn fun game. I've been playing this one the last few days. Got Super Mario Galaxy 2. So, not bad for five bucks. And on these, I'm saving the best for last. Man, today I made a nice friggin' score at a thrift store that I usually don't find many games at or just games in good shape whoever had them took really good care of their stuff because they are like freaking new so it's getting best for last this one kind of shows you here on their pricing this was three dollars and 29 cents for a ps1 game the only reason i got it is because it's pale and i happen to have a ps1 debugging system i got the uh green one where it looks like the original PlayStation that had all the extra hookups on back to where you can plug in just regular old like DVD audio video cords or whatever instead of using the PlayStation official cord and uh, that thing plays anything that's PlayStation 1 there's no lockout chips or nothing as it did play this it's just being that it's pale I'd have to have a pale TV to be able to see the video, but I could tell it was playing it. It loaded up the logo, and then I heard it doing its thing. It wasn't just constantly trying to read the disc, going back and forth like it does if it doesn't like it. So, until I get a pale TV or whatever, which I don't know how that'll work. Don't know, but cool to have in my collection. And uh, this, for a PlayStation 1 disc, is in really good condition. This has hardly been played. All 
complete. So why is that Tomb Raider, The Last Revelation? This is what the European ones look like. I'd say it's about twice as thick. Let's see. Yep, I think it is. Move something here just to compare. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Almost twice as thick as one of our US jewel cases for PlayStation. So cool. Once again, this was $329 at my new Goodwill. This is for the Wii, also from my new Goodwill. No manual. Disc isn't bad, just really, really light scratching. Played no problem. Why is this 007 Quantum of Solace? This one cost the $2.99. This, I guess they figured it was like new, which it might as well be. It is in really good shape. This was $4.99 for the GameCube. And this is the player's choice version of Pac-Man Versus and Pac-Man World 2. There's two discs in it. All complete and both of the discs I mean they look like new there's not a scratch on them let's see I never did look at the books one for Pac-Man World 2 <laughs> they just stuck in a little pamphlet for Pac-Man Versus that's crazy yeah this Pac-Man Versus if you have a uh, Game Boy Advance and the link cable you can link it up somehow and play it right? Cool enough, man. Instructions for that. And the instructions for the other game. So, not bad for $5 range. So there you go on their pricing on their games. And on uh, the highest price, uh, was either the first or second time I was there. I was there on their grand opening. And that place was packed, but uh, I think it was the second day that I went. They had some uh, PS3 games, and I think they were either $5.99, like 6 bucks or whatever, or $6.99. Which I could do better at my pawn shops, or just other thrift stores. And they weren't in good shape. A lot of the games they've had there lately are not in good shape, and a lot of sports craft. They have... They had uh, some for the Sega Genesis, and some guy bought the regular games. Like, they had Lion King and a few others like that. Bad shape, and I know they were more than three bucks. And they do have a couple of carts that have been sitting there since their grand opening. One for the Genesis, which is a loose Lion King. Labels all beat up. That they want a few bucks for, and then they got, I think... A fishing game or whatever for the N64, same thing. They want a few bucks for it, and it's not in good shape. And uh, the boxed games that he got, the boxes looked like they'd sit out in the rain. Like the labels inside got moisture damage and shit, and they were still one. A really stupid price for them. So just, <laughs> I think it's just being there, right place at the right time, on being able to find anything good, as I've been hitting them up constantly. Every time I go to town, I hit them up, man. Gonna throw, <sighs> yeah, gonna throw these at you. Could tell my pain pills kicking in. The brain's working better. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, beast, just wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> right place at the right time, man. <laughs> I got these from a thrift store, thrift store uh, called Ark. It's been here for a long time, and uh, usually when I spot games there, they are beat to shit, and they. Usually one at two dollars or more. These were under the counter with a bunch of other PS2 games and a few Xbox games, and I think some PlayStation One games. 
They had some loose stuff in there. Anyways, a buck a game. First one for a dollar. Kingdom Hearts 2. Black variation here. Not a player's choice. None of these are player's choice. Anyways, nice shape. I'm thinking this came from somebody that plays the game once and then that's it. Mint condition. There is not a scratch on it. I'm just not used to this, man. Not in my town. <laughs> Very hard to run into people around here to take care of their stuff. So I think all these came from one person. Next one. Same thing. Mint condition. Got Valkyrie Profile 2. It's Silmaria. Diarrhea. Daria. Daria got diarrhea. I don't know. Anyways. Dollar. <laughs> Now for the grand finale, and uh, I am going on eBay prices. I got to get on eBay on one of my computers and go into the sold listings to see what they're really going for. These two seem to be around ten dollars asking price, in good shape. This one, show it to you first. Got Xeno Saga Episode Three, which also includes Sprotch. Zara Thrustra. And uh, when I looked this up, the regular version of it, where it just has Xeno Saga 3, that one's not worth as much. Anyways, this is like friggin' new. All complete, both discs. If I can get them out, this thing. Oh, that's what they did. <laughs> they have the things to get your finger in there, but then they put this little piece of plastic in the way, like a lip going around the outside of the disc, so you can't grab it. Anyways, first disc, mint condition. Second disc, mint condition. Mint condition. I really question if this even got played, man. It is just too freaking clean. I mean, the dirt is clean. <laughs> Everything about it is clean. Anyways, when I look this up, man... For one in good shape, all complete, you're talking 50 bucks and up on eBay. There's some people that will want like 70, 80 bucks for ones that are just perfect shape. So that's where I gotta get on to the sold listings and look this up and see what people are actually paying for it because the price jumps up and down from good to really fucking good. There was one on there and I, th I don't know if it was just outright mint condition or sealed or what and they were asking like a hundred and something which some people just get fucking crazy that's the joy of looking up shit on ebay but <laughs> nonetheless worth more than a dollar fuck goodwill man because <laughs> i know if these were goodwill they'd be wanting damn close to ebay all right got this at the same thrift store. Thought this was cool. And, uh, let's see. Yeah. Anyways, for a dollar, got a Simon swipe. Pretty friggin' cool. Right 
think it shuts off on its own eventually. It's got a switch on it where it's either try me or just outright play it, but I think after it sits for a while not being played, it just, yeah, that's what it does. It'll do like a one around with all the rings and then just shut off. Pretty cool. Got that for a dollar. Same day, today, <laughs> when I was at Goodwill checking first. Same damn thing, they wanted three bucks. In about the same condition, which it's not in bad shape at all. Now, speaking of Simon, I got this on their grand opening day and paid a lot more than a dollar for it, but just too cool to pass up. Anyways, let's see. What is the date on this? Yes, this is an original Simon from 1978 in the box. And the box definitely shows its age, but not horribly. Whoever had this tried to take care of it. And when you see what counts is in the insides, man, they took really good care of it. I'm thinking this came from like a grandma and grandpa to where they had it in a cupboard sealed away until grandkids came over. Grandkids that probably never played it. As I'm thinking all the wear is just from it being packed around all these years. So anyways, show you the back of the box too. When I looked this up on eBay, I saw a different variation to where it doesn't show the two games here. It just has this bigger or longer or whatever. Anyways, it's showing Microvision and Super Simon. I've seen a broken Microvision before. In fact, I think it was a video game world where my uh, buddy John works. He's the owner of the store. I think he's got one. But I have never seen a Super Simon. So I'm going to have to look out for that. It looks really friggin' cool. There's the bottom of it. And then more instructions to the inside of the lid. This is the original warranty, which allowed you to write in if you like it or dislike it or whatever. They wanted to know what you thought of their toy. And, uh, Here's something to show things have changed in the way of income. It says, please indicate the range of your total family income for the last calendar year. They start at 10000 I do e-rewards, and a lot of times it will ask, what's your income? I think the lowest they go is 1500 My brain's not working. Pills definitely kicked in. 15000 to like 25,000 on the lowest. And this on the highest, it's showing 35,000. So <laughs> times have changed, man. <laughs> Good shape. This is talking about their new long life bulbs, as it's got actual light bulbs inside of it. And they're even telling you how to take it apart. Let's see. Okay, they were charging a dollar a light bulb. And then postage and handling, which was a lot cheaper back in the day. Otherwise, uh, I did open it up. The light bulb is still in. Is they got a little box inside of it for the spare where it just sits in there and then there's a piece of scotch tape holding it in place. So anyways, that. I guess I got a glue to the bottom of it because the glue just came loose. This is a serial number for it. Just five nine eight zero nine two seven. Original instruction manual. And now for the reason I paid the higher than usual price. This thing is in mint condition. <laughs> in, 
I said I think it was an older couple that had this for their grandkids or whatever, and it just never got played much, if at all. I mean, it is perfect. The only thing it shows is a little bit where the switches have slid back and forth. That I might be able to just polish out if I just lightly scrub it with something. It almost looks like it's just smears from dust or whatever. It doesn't look like it's scratched, but man, it's just perfect. It's all over. It's perfect. And it plays beautifully. Or hopefully it does. <laughs> Something I'm going to bring up here where I'm just taking a guess that uh, batteries back in the day, a lot of them, when it came to cheaper batteries, they were paper. And I'd swear they were a little bit thicker. So I got a couple of Duracell in this. And for a while I thought maybe the reason this thing's so nice is because it had a defect, because it would be working and then it would just shut off. Or I'd hear this... <laughs> The speaker going nutso in it anyways the batteries were fitting loose enough to where they'd rattle and lose contact every once in a while so what I did being that it's Halloween had to add a little bit of doom to it because naturally it was doing this the last time I tried to do this goddamn video <laughs> naturally it's gonna start screwing up so now it should work okay let's turn her on here start so as you can see man works and looks beautiful and uh, for anybody that finds one of these loose to where they need to get at the light bulbs the way you open it up these three switches here, the ones that slide back and forth, they just lift off and then you flip it over and there are four screws you take out around the outer edge and then with it laying face down, in fact, I don't know if I had to, yeah, I, was, I think I was able to just leave the battery in it. It takes a nine volt battery. Anyways, face down, Two halves separate, and then there should be a little spot in there that's got a spare. And if there's not a spare, I haven't checked at Home Depot or any place to see if I can get replacement bulbs for this at one of my hardware stores. Because they are a little bit weird. I've never seen them before. I'm used to finding old toys to where it's got the flashlight type bulbs to where either they screw in like a regular light bulb. Or they're like the ones that you'd have in your car for your tail lights and stuff where you have the two little pins so you push in and then give it a twist and it locks. Anyways, these are all glass to where the end of it's flat and then there's a couple of leads or whatever for positive and negative folded over that and they fit in little clippies. So hopefully they're still made like I'm going to be playing this to death. I'm figuring man, being that it Obviously, didn't get played much. They'll probably last a long time. It's, I don't want to be playing it all the time just in case something dies in it, man. I want to keep this in pristine condition. Anyways, this was 10 bucks. The beauty of this is the reason I didn't mind spending 10 bucks. I mean, this stays in my personal collection. I love these old games. They just bring back a lot of fun memories, and I'm getting a good collection of them now. I've actually got a bin full of handheld type stuff like this. So, cool. Okay. It's War Putty, man. Gotta start ripping on something, so might as well be Goodwill again. Example. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this was five bucks. I'd have to rewatch my vid that I show this on. Anyways, this I got at the old Goodwill, which uh, they had all the bins where you'd go through it, and then stuff like this they'd have on the shelf, but dirt cheap. Everything there was just dirt cheap. I mean, I saw a guy walk out of that place once, just smiling ear to ear. He'd found racks, is in luggage racks or for your skis or whatever, for a fucking Humvee. 
50 bucks for both of them and they were like new. And I think I, <laughs> I I looked him up in the car just to see how good a deal he got. So I had my smartphone and I think it was like, God, could easily have been 500 <laughs> to where they obviously didn't look up shit in that store. That was the good thing. They didn't look up anything, man. They just were trying to get rid of it because they constantly had stuff coming in. Because it was all the junk that either didn't sell or just junk. A lot of it was stuff that just should have been thrown in a dumpster. But found this. I did have to do a bit of cleaning on it as it opened up and clean all the pots for the knobs and stuff for volume and stuff and clean the tape deck and everything. But five bucks, man, and it looks beautiful now. Saw one at the new Goodwill. I was going to grab it until I saw the price. It was a little Panasonic boom box from the 80s, about this wide, stereo speakers, so two speakers, tape deck radio, but uh, the thing was broken. Check this here. The sides of this that are plastic that hold it in place, one side was busted off. Not to where it cracked the face of it here, but just broke off, even cracked to where you could fix it. And they had stuck the piece in the battery compartment. <laughs> they had 30 bucks on that son of a bitch for a broken radio. And to this day, as they opened a little bit ago, so I've been going there damn near every day or every other day or whatever, man. Every time I'm in town, I go there. They've been getting in a lot of cool stereo type stuff. And man, the prices are just crazy. There's only one thing, which is the most expensive thing I've gotten there, which I'll show in another video. It has to do with laser discs. I found something really cool there. But I spent a lot more than I usually would compared to my other laser disc players. So that I'll show in another bit because it's heavy as all fuck. It's one of the heaviest laser disc players I have found, Matt. It is built like a damn tank. Now on other stuff, video game stuff, the uh, second time I was there, they actually had some video game systems. They had just a bare bones Xbox that I believe was 25 bucks, no hookups, just bare bones. So you had no clue if it was working or not. The only way you could power it is if you could find a cord that fit with all their various cords that they have there. And then the same thing, they had a, uh, PlayStation 2 fat and it was not in as good a condition. The Xbox wasn't bad, the PlayStation 2 had been played a bit and 25 bucks. They have had some Wii systems there. They had one that I almost jumped on and I was thinking, nah man, I, I bet there's something wrong with it. But it was all bagged up, all complete, and I think it was 30 or 35 bucks for an original white Wii with all the original stuff with it. Now the crazy thing that I saw is uh, this is Kingman, man. It, it <laughs> I could drive around this town twice and not kill 30 minutes, man. It's small. And when it comes to pawn shops, they're all about the same on prices. Like uh, Pawn World and Pawn USA, I think they're around 50 bucks, even if it's in the box, for an Xbox 360 4 gig system. They had one there, 4 gig, whatever, man. This is a fucking thrift store. In the box, I didn't even want to look in the box after I saw the price. It was like, fuck you guys. But some guy did buy it. Hopefully he got a good deal because it was over $100. It was like 130 bucks or something, man, at freaking Goodwill for something that you really can't take out and test, man. And what's crazy is... uh. Unless he didn't check, the last Goodwill quit selling game systems until up to the very end to where uh, we can't sell this because it might have somebody's personal information on it. So they just outright quit selling Wii's or Xbox 360's or PS3's or whatever. Anything new that you can put personal information on, including handhelds like Nintendo 3DS or whatever. And then, uh, like I say, last few days I started seeing them for like 30 bucks where they had pulled the freaking hard drives. So you're buying 
an Xbox 360 or a PS3 with no hard drive for 30 bucks, usually with no hookups. So you have no freaking clue if it works. So something changed there. Or maybe it was just the bigger stores, they can't test it out or do whatever, wipe the data, whatever. Now on other stuff, now that I'm into 30 minutes here, but so far so good on the pain. So my pain pills kicked in as I'm feeling stupider. They all <laughs> make me just bleh. They're too strong. Anyways, on like furniture and stuff, some things it's just why, and then some stuff they damn near want retail. Like, uh, I didn't get this one at the old Goodwill that I've turned into Frankenstein because it's top piece it's not too sturdy for a freaking uh, lazy boy but the rest of it's really good anyways this I got for 13 bucks or whatever at a yard sale the other one that's in the living room is in better shape nicer chair that one I got for $15 at the old Goodwill beautiful shape saw one similar at the new Goodwill 30 bucks and it had stains on it I <laughs> it had been well used and they wanted that much money. Recently, and it's still sitting there, I don't think anybody's going to buy it, unless it is what I think it is, is I didn't even want to try and flip it over because of my back and everything, but uh, I'm guessing it was a dual recliner, as in like a mini couch with, a recli with two recliners glued together, but I'm thinking it was made by Best Furniture, which that stuff... Dang. <laughs> that was my last big freaking chair it was best furniture it was damn near a thousand dollar chair i mean they are built like freaking tanks until you try sleeping in it every freaking night for a year or so and then the tank gets crushed as in a tank paratrooper boom explosion whatever anyways i think they wanted like 150 for it which if it's best furniture damn good deal but still, it's the thrift store, man. It's going to sit there. People don't have that kind of money to spend at the thrift store around here unless they really know their furniture. Then they had another couch, which I could tell was low quality. That they wanted like 200 or something for. And then like, uh, if they were used, they can't legally do it here in Arizona. Anyways, they've got mattresses. And possibly box springs. That I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna say just mattresses, but I think it was from a hotel or someplace like that to where they had a bunch still sealed up, brand new, to where maybe the hotel went out of business and they just donated them. Anyways, I think the biggest one they had was a uh, full size bed or whatever. I saw some twin ones there, but it was starting like 125 up for a mattress at Goodwill. I can go to one of my mattress stores, hence where I got my mattress for my official bedroom now, that's foam, and find it on sale for about that price, new. So some of the stuff like I said, they're, they're damn near doing retail. So hopefully, because I'm not in the big city, you guys aren't having it worse. I don't know. I'm hoping they will make a change to where they can start pricing their own stuff because it's, it's just fucking crazy, man. Got everybody's hopes up, and <laughs> the only thing good is I'm not seeing any hoarders at this store. First day, saw three blue color tweakers. They were there for like five minutes and then out of there once they started seeing the prices. They can afford anything. But no hoarders. No more people filling up their carts. <laughs> Them days are over here. Alright. Longer video than I thought I'd make, but I wanted to let you guys know that it's not just you guys on your damn Goodwill store. Mine is that way too, but you can still find good stuff if you look hard. Have a good one, everybody. Happy Halloween.